Ms. Tiscareño Sato to the stage. Thank you. Buenas tardes a todos. Me alegro de estar aquí para celebrar el trabajo, los esfuerzos y la excelencia de nuestras hijas e hijos. Empezamos con un aplauso para las mamás y papás, dos estudiantes excelentes. Since I started kindergarten speaking Spanish, I figured I would start tonight by speaking my first language, Espanol. I'll translate. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here to celebrate the work, the effort, and the excellence of our daughters and sons. Let's start with a round of applause for the mothers and fathers of these excellent students. I'm here, and I'm honored to be here, to share highlights of a life lived with high expectations, and to leave you students with the mindset of high expectations to take you forward. First, a memory from my freshman year. The day after an awards ceremony, very much like this one, my principal, Faith Hamry, approached me in the hallway and said, Graciela, I see you at an elite university one day, maybe even Harvard. My response, what's Harvard? Where is Harvard? Is that a city? Yeah. True story. See, this took place in an agricultural community in northeastern Colorado, where the largest employer was a slaughterhouse, a meatpacking plant. Post-graduation expectations for teens were low. Work in a grocery store, local community, retail job, wherever you could. Some students enrolled at the local community college, and some at the nearby University of Northern Colorado in Greeley. One, maybe two students a year left the state to go to another university out of a graduating class of 300. So I'm really resonating here with what I just said. So see, I really, as, as the daughter of Mexican immigrants, the firstborn daughter, I had no idea what Harvard was, what it meant. So God bless her, Ms. Hamry explained it to me. And you know what? She was the only person ever in my junior high and high school career who ever said that to me. But you know what? One person was enough. She planted that seed of high expectations in my mind. Part of having a high expectations mindset involves creating a supportive community eager to see you succeed. This means you may have to rise above low expectations that you hear from any source and yes, perhaps even from your own extended family. Case in point. On the day I received the two most important letters of my life, one, congratulations, you've been accepted UC Berkeley. Go Bears. <laughs> and the second letter informing me that the Air Force was awarding me a full four-year ROTC scholarship to go to college. Both letters on the same day. On that day, when we opened up the letters, my mommy cried. Not with joy, because I figured out a way to do what I said I was going to do, and I was going to leave. My neighbors and my primos and primas, you know what they said? ¿De veras vas a dejar a tu mamá? Wow, you're really going to leave your mother? Nobody said, yay, Berkeley. Nobody even knew what that was. It's the same idea of worst part, right? So by saying, ¿de veras vas a dejar a tu mamá? They were placing another barrier in front of me, the barrier of guilt. Guilt for wanting to pursue higher education, right? At an elite university far from home. So I had to overcome that too. And then they called me rebelde. Rebelde, a rebel, a rebel for wanting to be a scholar. True. So I went all the way, rebel. I busted those entrenched gender norms from young Latina girls. I took that Air Force ROTC scholarship. I moved 1,100 miles away to Berkeley. My parents drove me out there. They loved me there. I studied environmental design. I studied architecture. I did the aerospace studies program at Cal, and four and a half years later, my parents came back to Berkeley to pin the second lieutenant bars on my uniform as I became a military officer and was selected for flight training. 
I completed undergraduate navigation training, aviation school in Sacramento 11 months later. And I accepted my fiance, Gen Rosato's proposal that same day after he pinned the silver wings on my uniform. And we're celebrating 26 years of marriage next month and I have to recognize him. And then I enjoyed nine years on active duty and this young Latina who did what she did, I ended up flying and deploying to 24 different countries on four different continents. So my rebellion against low expectations was complete. So my message to the students tonight is one person's rebellion is another person's personal journey of achievement and see how far you can go you can become. So please, become a rebelde if you need to break away from low expectations. Notice. I said rebel against low expectations. I did not say rebel against your heritage. This is a very important <laughs> distinction. Okay, I kicked the low expectations in the teeth while always lovingly embracing my mommy, my papi, my parents, our language, our rituals and traditions, because both are possible. In fact, my current career as a social entrepreneur and educational publisher, to at least yes point about seeing ourselves in literature, is to showcase the positive stories of Latinas in the USA. I actually started a publishing company to do just that. Because she's right, we need more of that. And we're the ones that are going to create that literature. One of the people I featured in the book, his name is Humberto Rincón. His eight older sisters and brothers went to work after high school. And he was encouraged by his counselor to become a mechanical engineer and material scientist at college. When I interviewed him for my book, he was most eager to tell me his story, but most importantly, he wanted me to know this. He says, because I went to college, my daughter is now a medical doctor. So see, his family's educational attainment and economic trajectory was forever changed because he decided to take the advice of his counselor and go be a scholar. And the way Humberto and I see it, because we chose that path of higher education, High expectations has now become part of our family's cultural heritage as Latino Americans. Yeah, it's become part of who we are. In my family, three out of five Piscareño kids completed their bachelor's degrees, and I completed a master's in global management and marketing while flying for the Air Force. So for the students, I want you to let the adversity that you face in your life become your jet fuel that powers you ever higher. Because you're going to have a lot of adversity, just keep using that as fuel. Okay? Climb higher. Do what we did. Understand the power of the ecosystem, the mentors, university educated mentors, entrepreneurial mentors. Build your supportive ecosystem now, students, with your family in the center and adding to that solid foundation those of us in the community who are here ready to help you. Make connections, make introductions, have you find out about careers that you've never heard of. Just ask. So yeah, you're going to have to leave your comfort zone to ask and to build your network. So you might as well start today. That way, you'll never be alone when you need to figure out the most important stuff in those big decisions. You won't be alone. Speaking of your comfort zone, let's talk about being scared. Okay? For many of you whose parents are not college graduates, leaving your comfort zone might look like this beginning tomorrow. Show up at the counselor's office and ask this question, like I did. So how does a kid like me find the money to go to college? How does that happen? Ask, ask, ask again. Ask a variety of people. Get an answer to this. Make it your goal, students, to win so much scholarship money and grant money that you graduate debt-free from college, like I did, including my master's degree. The money is on there. But let's talk about that here. Do you think it was easy for me culturally to move 1,100 miles away from my family? To a university I had literally never seen college visits? What's that? I didn't do college visits. Do you think that I was scared? Yeah. There was times I was very freaked out so far from home. It, it was extremely difficult. I only learned later how hard it was on my family, right? But I had to do it. I had to go find out, because the best version of myself depended on it, and changing the trajectory for my entire family. Think about it, if I had stayed in the little security blanket in my hometown, in my family, nothing would have changed. 
So I left my comfort zone and I took the scholarship and I ran towards my future. And I'm here to encourage you students to do the same. Escape your comfort zone. Find out who you can become. Here at school, scare yourself silly by taking the most challenging classes here. Alicia was just telling you that Latino students aren't there. Okay? Make it your business to be there. Okay? Here's another one. Is there a leadership position in a school club here that interests you? Does it scare you to see yourself leading that group? Good. Go ahead. Terrify yourself. Get in there. When that choice is presented and that scares the heck out of you, attack it. See where it leads you. And you know what? The opposite is so, so, so sad. The opposite is a coulda, woulda, shoulda. The regrets you'll hear later, the decisions that you might have made that didn't. So your takeaway, on the other side of fear, on the other side of that terror, is the best version of yourself. That's where life is most fulfilling. It's how you can live a life as I lived, full of miracles and surprises. And decades later, you can look back and go, wow, I really did that. You know, earlier I shared the story of the principal who suggested I belong to someone like Harvard, the moment she set in motion all the events that led me to Berkeley. So I want to do a little activity with the students, please. Students, all students, please stand up. All the students being recognized here tonight. Mr. Young, stand up. Now, please sit down if both of your parents are college graduates. Excellent, thank you. Now, please sit down if one of your parents is a college graduate. Okay. For the rest of you that are still standing, you're just like me at your age. Right here, you have the potential to change your family's trajectory and your descendant's trajectory by choosing to become the first university graduate in your family. Whatever improvements, whatever dreams, whatever wishes you have and are going to have, you're positioned to actually achieve them. Okay? So now, students, stand up all again. One more time. Now, I do not underestimate the power of somebody looking you in the eye and saying what was told to me. So I'm going to say it. We're going to channel the woman who sparked that high expectation, spark and fire in me. And I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, you, 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 all of you belong at elite universities. I see you there, maybe even Harvard. And I'm looking at each of you so that you never say it was not meant to you. Okay? In her memory, I channel her and I say it to you because I know that it impacts her. So go ahead and sit down. Promise yourself from this moment forward to have high confidence as much as possible and step out of your comfort zones and have those high expectations in yourself. Let's talk about cultural gifts as I wind down. You know, my parents did not let us speak English in the house. Like the moment we crossed in the door, we had to speak Spanish. Thank God, because now I'm fully bilingual fully bicultural. I'm going to teach you a new word today. You know the word in Spanish, ambos? Both? Okay? Some people say, well, are you Mexican or are you American? The answer is yes. Are you bicultural? That's half. No, not bi. Ambos? Both? The word is ambicultural. It's an actual word. Ambicultural means you're both cultures. 100%. I'm 100% Mexicana and I'm 100% Americana. Don't make me choose. I never have compromised on that. And because I'm bilingual, I've had opportunities to work in the embassy, U.S. Embassy in Quito, Ecuador, for a German telecommunications company, for an Israeli solar electronics company, all these nice corporate positions, because I've never surrendered any of my cultural gifts. Can you tell I'm proud of my heritage? Can you tell I'm proud of its creativity? And can you tell I'm proud of its language? I am. So for you, Please take this with you. I want you to celebrate, harness, and practice all of your cultures. We have so many blends here, right? They're the mix of the attributes that make you, you. 
So please be you, because everybody else is already taken. Don't try to be somebody else. Be you. The winners are and have always been those who ignore the noise and embrace the precious cultural gifts to differentiate yourselves. It's just been true for a long, long time. Bring your authentic self, your complete self, and all the cultural elements to your work, your leadership, your writing, your activism, and soon your college essays. Many, many, many college granting organizations are ready to fund your education all the way through to your PhD. Okay, and we can help you connect. Start your scholarship tracker this summer. If you don't know what a scholarship tracker is, please ask me, I'll be here. And remember this, you will be successful now and as adults when you surround yourself with people who want you to be successful. So, you're already on the path of leadership and excellence. We're here for you. So thank you for this honor to share little pieces of my life and miracles. To help you peek into the brilliant futures that I imagine for each of you. Remember to rise above any bigotry you see in the world. Rise above the noise. Always appreciate the gifts of your cultural heritage and be grateful for their resilience. Always rise above anything or anyone who doubts your brilliance. And learn to regularly step outside your comfort zone. Let's find out who the best version of yourself is on the other side of fear. All the fear that you will overcome as you adopt this mindset of high expectations for the rest of your lives. Gracias otra vez, and congratulations to you all, Castro Valley Latinos.